Good night, this is Thrill. Uh, next car coming in is a 2005 Impreza, I believe. I'll show a video either of it coming in or just an introduction showing it. All right, car got dropped off last night. It's a 2005 Impreza. Looks half decent, manual. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's wrong. I just know I think it blew up. Um, timing covers look okay, even though he said something about timing. But there's oil back there, so I'll be pulling the accessories off and then pulling this engine out. And I have the new engine right here. Good morning, Terrell here. Uh, next car in as well. This is a 2000, I wanna say about 11 hatch Deborah X. It's in white. Uh, it needs a clutch and a rear main, so we're gonna get started on this. Probably gonna try to just time lapse the removal of the engine, uh, play some music over it, and uh, you've already seen how I do this, but I'm probably gonna describe everything just because I want to. This here is the engine bay. We're gonna get started on this thing probably today after I tune a car at two o'clock. You're gonna drain coolant, drain oil, because uh, it needs a rear main, so I might as well pull that off anyways. I'm gonna pull off intake, intercooler, heat shield for the turbo, battery, accessories right here, power steering pump, AC compressor off, and then you got coolant lines in the back, you have radiator across the front. Um, again, I'm just probably gonna time lapse this, but I'll at least describe what I'm doing. And then you got fuel lines, you have your brake master uh, line that comes through the back of the manifold, you have a coolant reservoir, and you have one electrical connector there, and then you have ground traps on the bottom of the motor, and of course, bell housing bolts. I already started this job, pulled the fuel lines off, and then the air intake, and the intercooler, and then the brake booster line, and then the electrical connectors for the alternator and the power, the AC compressor. And next, I'll probably end up doing the bell housing bolts, and then the downpipe bolts. I already got that electrical connector off, and I'll have to drain the coolant in a minute. Well, I got bored and did it a different way. So I got the AC compressor off and the power steering pump off, and the alternator off and then the radiator I just dropped forward. Got the radiator hose in the bottom off, this one off. Power steering pump's over there now, AC compressor's over there now. Not gonna time lapse this one I don't think cause uh, I'm just gonna do it on the next one. But anyhow, I still have a sensor there and a sensor down there. And this radiator comes out and then bell housing bolts and uh, motor mount nuts and downpipe. And then I believe this engine's out already. Alrighty, I got the bell housing bolts all out. You can see missing one here, missing one there. See one missing here, and then on the bottom, you can't see the rest. Downpipe is off, um, everything else is off. I just undo the motor mount nuts, and then both the ground straps. You can see one ground strap, right, hanging right there. Anyways, lifted it up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this to here, and then pull this motor out. All right, as you just saw, I just pulled it out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this clutch off. Look and see how bad it looks on the inside, how bad it's leaking. Turbo looks wonderful. Um, see how this thing looks in a moment. Two left and I am not doing them one-handed. Actually not gonna lie, that looks pretty decent. This clutch is definitely usable. We have life left. It's not great, it's it's glazed, but it definitely has life left. Not terribly bad. Sorry about the lighting here. And this flywheel could probably be resurfaced, that's for sure. And for the moment of truth, yeah, that rear main was pissing pretty bad. You can see the oil on the bottom. So, get this rear main swapped out. I'll clean this all off. That looks actually good down there. I don't think that's leaking at all. It's just this rear main is just pissing all over. So, yeah, oil pan. Definitely a pretty thick gasket right there. But I'll uh, 
Hoping it's not that, hoping it's just the rear main. All right, I'm gonna start pulling this one as well tonight. Um, I'm gonna pull the intake off right here. Uh, this line off comes off to the brake master, or the brake uh, booster. And then fuel line right here and the fuel line here. Actually, it's EVAP, whatever. I'm gonna pull these covers off. They're all, the radiator out. Uh, same thing, all, uh, power steering pump off, AC compressor. I'll test and see if there's, there's AC in there. If there's not, I'll, I'll take off the lines. If there is, I'll just take off the entire compressor. Battery, got a starter back there. You have two coolant lines there. And then you have the motor, the bell housing bolts around and you have a connector there, 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 there. And then motor mounts and this one, our motor will be out as well. All right, so far, power stand pumps out of the way, alternators out of the way. I got the top bell housing, bell housing bolts out. All those wires are undone. They're just hanging out here. Uh, they actually can all be moved now down and out of the way. And then still have AC I haven't touched yet. I gotta take this belt off. Um, probably gonna get the bell housing bolts off. Maybe the AC compressor off tonight. Battery out of the way. Uh, probably the fuel line stuff out of the way. And then again, that line that comes across right there. And then I'll probably stop tonight. All right, we just got the radiator out. The housing bolts are all off. All the fuel lines are off. This one's disconnected from here. Got the AC lines off. Power steering pump moved over. All those lines, or all those electrical connectors are off. Uh, coolant's draining in here. I'm gonna lift the car up in the morning and take the exhaust, just the header straight off and then pull this motor right out and then check everything over and put the new motor in and get her going. Checking this guy out down here. Lots of oil all over, but the shaft looks good. The um, clutch fork looks good. A little bit of oil on the bottom, of course, to be expected, but nothing major. So I'll just clean this off with a bunch of brake clean, get this one ready, and get the other motor ready. All right, this morning I've started cleaning uh, the engine bay and this engine itself, and I'm getting this rear main seal uh, torn off. Look how bad this thing is. I've never seen one this bad. It's supposed to be rubber, and it's like, you can hear it cracking it's like a hard plastic this thing is terrible no wonder that this thing was leaking i'm gonna go ahead and insert the new one but i mean like you can, it, it literally sounds like it's plastic just for reference this is a new one this is how it's supposed to sound when it falls see how that has nice cushiony that's this one you can, it sounds like almost like glass or plastic new rear main seals in next once the flywheel gets here install that install this new clutch and drop this motor back in so well, after cleaning this area up i just found that the clutch fork is pretty toasted uh both sides are ground down on the bottom so i'm uh, i just ordered a new one that'll be here in a couple days otherwise everything looks good in here uh we'll install that when it gets here and then obviously the engine will be ready by then i'm sure to be installed um, just needs a flywheel and clutch and pressure plate on. All right, it's a new morning. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this motor out if I can. Uh, I just need to take off the motor mounts on the bottom and the headers. Uh, I'll show you that in just a moment. So I'm gonna take off the bolts for the, the nuts on that side and then the nuts on this side of the header. And then the motor mount nut right there and right there. All, right, all the nuts are up there now. And then I'm just gonna hook up this lift to here, I'm gonna put the jack underneath the tranny, lift it up off the motor mounts, and pull this engine out. Got the motor hooked up, about to pull this thing out. All right, motor's out, obviously. The oil bearing is pretty toast. Shaft looks good though. though. That clutch fork looks good. Go ahead and pull this clutch off and see how this thing looks. See if I will need to be surfaced. And uh, bring this to the machine shop. And then get that motor ready to drop in. All right, he's got the clutch off. Flywheel is definitely toasty when you get that resurfaced. This clutch is toast. She's got thickness left, but you can see it's been, uh, been driven pretty hard. So glad we got a new clutch for this. All right, I got some advice from my fellow buddy, and I'm just gonna make this all into one decent sized video. Uh, we have a hatchback Debrex, it's, it's an 11 or a 12, I believe. And then we have a Impreza, like an 05, 
that uh, you've seen now pull both engines and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall both and get this thing, get them both going, hopefully, hoping by the end of the day, um, depends on how fast the flywheels get resurfaced. There's the Debra X block. I'm also gonna get a valve cover done on it. You can see it's leaking pretty good down there. And then this is the new Impreza motor. The old one's on the engine lift still. This engine, I'm gonna remove everything that we don't need, and I'm gonna show you what we don't need for that motor. Uh, the power steering pump I left on that car so I don't lose power steering fluid, so I'm gonna end up pulling the power steering pump off this. I'm gonna keep the alternator off, and hopefully it's just a good alternator. Um, both of these lines need to be taken off. This flex plate back here needs to be taken off. Uh, fuel lines taken off. AC line taken off. Other AC line taken off. I'm not sure why they cut them. This plug off. And then take the headers off because the headers are currently sitting on the bottom of the car. You take this off and then this off. And this off. And then I think that's pretty much it. Glad, luckily they didn't cut a whole lot more. Alrighty, I got the new shift fork for this car i'm gonna go ahead and there's a thing on the back of it to show you what it looks like that little pin thing i'm gonna swap that over to that fork then i'm gonna get it onto this transmission and uh, put the new throttle bearing on and there's a new one on there new uh throttle bearing on i'll get this push onto the actual ball a little bit farther so it'll sit kind of more towards that side all right, flywheel is on the Deborah X block. Pilot bearing is installed correctly and nice and flat. Next will be the clutch and pressure plate and then this valve cover and then drop in this engine back in the car. Alrighty, I got the flywheel on and the pilot bearing installed. Uh, next step will be clutch and pressure plate and then this valve cover over here for the Deborah X and then dropping it back in this Subaru. All right, on this Impreza motor, I just got a new rear main in, and then I'm gonna install this flywheel. I just cleaned it. The surface looks weird, but I'll make it so it doesn't look like that in a moment. All right, I got this clutch on. It's a beautiful Clutch Masters clutch. Got the pilot bearing lined up. And uh, next step is gonna be, I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do the valve covers, just cause you can see this oil in here on the tops. I don't want these things to, to burn or leak. So we'll get that done. And then it'll just be installing this motor. Alright, I got the clutch on this car. It's an Xetti clutch. See, that's lined up perfectly again. And now I'm doing the valve cover gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the silicone off the sides of up here. And then re, re silicone it and then install the new valve cover gasket. And then this motor should be ready to drop in. Uh, I'm getting these uh, valve cover, uh, the spark plug holes removed. And look how bad these old ones are. It's like plastic. The whole engine just had some plastic feeling gaskets, unfortunately. But getting these ones removed, I have to literally use pliers to grab them because they're so flat. Uh, you can see though, I got the surface gorgeous looking. Just letting all the oil dry down here and then I'll put silicone on it and then I'll install this new valve cover gasket. And then like I said, this one will be ready to drop back in. All right, freshly silicone this entire outside. And now I'm gonna install the valve cover gasket or the valve cover again. She's all ready to go back in. Got the valve cover nice and sealed up. Just gonna go ahead and lift the car up, put the jack stands back down, lift the tranny up, and then move this over there and drop it in. Not filming super well right now, but got this at least started. Both of the studs in the bottom are started down there. Just need to get this to slide in. I've got her past the turbo now, almost sucked in. If you're having troubles here, usually I put it in gear, put something on the crank and turn it in small increments like that, just little bits till it lines up and then I'll kind of push it and it should just slide in. I don't know if I'm gonna get this on video. I'm gonna try to get it on video of it actually sliding in. Sorry about the angle, but let's see if it'll work out right here. See, the angle isn't quite there yet. Just a little bit more. <sighs> Getting close now. <sighs> Alrighty, got her to seal. Got one bolt up top, got the two bottom nuts on. Gonna go ahead and work on the next nuts. 
but I got it at least closed. All right, now we have all bath housing bolts in, got the starter in tight. I work on the downpipe, got the electrical connector in, the brake push line on, and work on the coat hoses, sorry about that. And then fuel lines and the accessories soon, and then the radiator. All right, I got the stretch belt on, got the AC compressor tight, the power steering pump tight, the alternator on. I'm going to zip this thing down, make it nice and tight in my car. that's tight enough oh yeah all right then i'm gonna tighten this in and then that in and then this is pretty much done uh plug in the power steering little pressure thing and then next will be the uh radiator on any 08 plus make sure not to forget the ground trap so you got the 10 there and then one on the other side and then don't forget your little uh fan plugins and then your radiator lower hose. I always put it, pull it off like this. That way I don't disturb the thermostat gasket. And then I'll pop it on. All right, I got a little ahead of myself, but it's uh, pretty much all done. Um, we got the battery back in, air pump back on, radiators all bolted up and everything nice and tight. Got this on, got the heat shield down there on, obviously the intercooler, intercooler clamp here and then the blow-off valve line. She's pretty much ready. Uh, I don't have coolant though, so I'll have to wait till the morning to start this, but at least it's ready. Check and make sure we got some oil in here. Ooh, look at that, nice and full of oil. Of course, I'll obviously um, clean that off and check again, but uh, lower this down and then tomorrow I'll just uh, fill up with coolant and hopefully she'll run. Just pulled the valve cover off this other engine and uh, the, the actual spark plug tube seals are pretty toast. New ones are nice and uh, a little bit bendy. The other ones are pretty crusty and gross. These new ones are pretty easy to stick them on there. One, two, and then obviously put the valve cover gasket, not around there, but around the actual valve cover. Which new ones are in this bag. And then I'll tighten this one back up. It's just five, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, five bolts on each side, that'll be done. And then this one will be ready to go in the car as well. Let's see when I pull the second one off, how bad these are. They're just like crunchy, Hard, there's no give to them, and this in the valve cover gasket is pretty toast as well. Okay, this valve cover is on and nice and tight now. See the spark plug tube's back on. Just have to put the valve, uh, the breather tube on that side and the breather tube on that side in the morning. But I'm calling it a night. It's a good night of work. That one's ready for in the morning. That one's all done. You see, it's coolant, like I had said before. Should be going in the morning. And I'm back at it this morning. Uh, this 2011 WRX I got pretty much done last night. I am just, I just topped off the coolant and uh, gonna go ahead and start it in this moment here and then spray out the engine bay and make sure we don't have any coolant leaks. Back in, get that coolant is all over, but I'll spray this off anyhow. It was spilled all over beforehand, so I'm gonna get it all nice and cleaned up. And she's currently bleeding slowly, but like I said, I'll just go ahead and start it. And here goes the first start. Always make sure that this is on heat. The AC button is not on. And here we go. Sounds like it should. She's running great. Just letting her bleed. Coming up and Get all the bubbles out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this outside in a moment. Pull, park it right there and spray it off. All right, now I'm gonna put the fell bearing on this shaft. I'm gonna clean all the stuff off of here and then go ahead and put this engine in. I had on three more things. So I just cleaned this whole area. It looks a lot better than I did. Clean the transmission inside up. Put the new fell bearing on and then remove the headers. They're currently right here. And then last but not least, I forgot this one did not come for some reason with studs in the back. You can see empty and empty. So I gotta swap the studs from that block over and then I can drop this in. Always be sure when you're putting a new block in that you check for the dowels. This transmission doesn't have any dowels, but this engine does have one right there. But the transmission doesn't have any, so we don't have any worries. If you had them in the transmission stuck and the engine, 
then you can't hardly get it in. It, it's very difficult to, to get them to push in without the engine or transmission already out. As you just saw, she just slid right in. So we are almost fully closed already. Just gonna put some bolts in, tighten this thing up, and this engine's in. All right, I just got back, uh, got the motor mounts tight, and now I realize that the power steering pump and the AC compressor are actually different on this motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and then swap the original AC compressor and power steering pump on, and then the fuel lines. And then I have to swap the, uh, it's a JDM. It's a JDM brake booster line, so I'm gonna have to take this out, put the little one from there into there and then swap them around. So this goes straight to there instead. And then, like I said, swapping out that and that, I'll use this alternator, I think. And then it'll be a radiator and intake. And we're about there. Well, boys and girls, we have a dilemma. Want to go put this AC belt on, move this crank pulley and look at this. The entire crank gear is destroyed. This GDM company just ain't telling the truth to people. Try and get that thing removed to get the new one swapped on and then uh, hopefully get this thing going. Okay, got a lot done. The radiator is in, alternator, power steering pump, AC compressor is in, everything's bolted up. Uh, I need to make a line from the brake booster to the new part because the JD manifold came with a little nipple that blocked it off. I can't get it out. If it doesn't work, I'll just have to swap it to the USDA manifold, but at least that's on. I got fuel lines on for now that'll work. And, uh, let me get this puppy fired up. I got coolant and oil in it. I just want to make sure it sounds good because the JDM company, I believe, may have lied about Miles. So I want to make sure this thing at least sounds good for him. If it is good, then I'll wrap it up. All right, let's see about first start. Got the battery mostly tight. Got power. Let's see if she'll crank over for me. Nothing. Well, let's see why. All right, found the ADM fuses blown. So I got a new one down there. Let's see if this thing starts now. Oh, there's fuel pressure I can hear. Oh, still nothing. Alrighty, we're gonna have to figure out what's going on here. Well, I just tested and I might put the clip in uh, with my test light and the neutral, neutral, the jumper for the starter is not working just like my, my Subaru in Montana. So um, I'm just jumping it for now to make sure this thing works. I'll show you, I'm just literally putting a wire on the back of the starter and then touching it to the battery and it's in neutral. And uh, let's see if she starts for me. Five minutes now, sounding good. Got a cap on this guy and then these both I put on correctly. And uh, just letting it run and, and warm up. Get your coolant bleeds. It is not even remotely getting warm yet, so I might have to swap manifolds still. I'm not sure if it's reading correctly or not, but hopefully we get this thing going for him. Well, this is the second official day of working on these cars. I'm trying to get this thing done by the end of the day. This is the Impreza. Um, last night I found that the coolant temp sensor wasn't working. I think it's all just because it's a JDM manifold. So I'm gonna swap the JDM manifold to the USDM manifold. Swap over the sensors correctly and uh, hopefully get this thing going so the customer can come get it tonight. All right, I got the intake manifold off. Gotta clean these uh, holes to the tops. Found the intake on for the coolant crossover on this one is right there for the sensor. And this other engine is in the back. So I'm gonna swap those over. So we just use the USDM everything. Uh, USDM sensors, of course. And then hopefully this thing will actually read coolant temp pressure or coolant temp and uh, run correctly. I like how this is gonna be routed better. Uh, this line will be a little bit different and actually uh, not plugged off. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up on the bottom, swap the crossover on, and then get her done. Okay, got both sides cleaned up nice and smooth. I got the cone crossover swapped over. Uh, put that line on and then this front line on and then get the intake manifold on next. Uh, I'm gonna double check the cam sensor there and maybe the knock sensor and stuff to make sure everything bolts up correctly before I get it all tight. All right, just got it all back together. Um, everything's plugged in, all the sensors went in perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to start this up again. And if I need to, I'll jump start, or I'll push start it again, but I'm hoping that this will just start up. All right, I gotta check the codes in a minute, but uh, it's running gorgeous again, getting the coolant to bleed. And uh, look at this, we have coolant temperature finally. So next step is just gonna be checking these codes out, seeing what's going on. Gotta check the codes out and see what's, uh, what's happening. And then see if I can figure out what exactly is going on with this car, why it won't start on its own. Have the jumper still with the jumper cable or the jumper wire, but uh, at least it's running and it's running well. I'll need a new Fro2 sensor, but it's idling pretty well. Heat's working wonderful. I'm gonna take this for a drive around the block. As you can see, currently zero miles on the, and uh, 123,000 on the body. All right, took it for its first test drive. Now I have two mile, 2.2 miles on it, running great. Uh, it needs gas, uh, but no real issues. It's dying a little bit at idle because the AFR sensor doesn't have one, uh, or it's not reading correctly, but... Uh,